Welcome. This Career Essentials video for PhDs and postdocs is on narrative CVs. Narrative CVs are a relatively new entity in the academic world. So this video aims to give you a better idea of what a narrative CV is by comparing it to an academic CV. The video will next go into why there is a move away from the traditional academic CV towards a narrative CV and how this fits in the wider drive to change the research culture. Then the video addresses the different sections of the narrative CV and it gives you examples of skills and experiences that you can include in a narrative CV to help you prepare for writing your own. Let's start by thinking a bit more about what a CV is. Does a CV cover the past, the present or the future? The traditional academic CV looks back at the past and emphasizes positions and publications. In the cover letter, you can then talk about the present. What skills do you bring to the job? It is also an opportunity to look forward. Why do you want this job at this institute? Where can you see the job take you? Let's compare a narrative CV to a traditional academic CV. The narrative CV still covers the past, but not just what you have done, but also how you have done it. It tells the story of how a much wider range of contributions, skills and experiences have made you into the researcher you are today. It enables people who have followed non-traditional career paths to evidence the skills and experience they bring. It's about wider impact, not just through publications. Now that we know what a narrative CV is, we can start to explore why it is being introduced. In 2019, the University of Cambridge signed the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment, DORA in short. DORA is a framework that recognizes the need to improve the ways in which the outputs of research are evaluated. It discourages the use of impact factors. The use of narrative CVs fits with this drive to change the way we assess research output. Narrative CVs are already being used by the Dutch Research Council, the Swiss National Science Foundation, the Luxembourg National Research Fund and the Island Health Research Board. UK Research and Innovation, which includes the seven research councils, is introducing narrative CVs to make research more inclusive and other UK funding bodies are looking at doing the same in the near future. Some people already have a more reflective CV that shows a broader range of outputs and impacts. But with the introduction of narrative CVs by funders, now is a good time to start thinking about a narrative of your career in more detail. With a traditional academic CV, researchers feel under pressure to deliver against a narrow set of criteria. Now, with a narrative CV, assessors will be able to take into account a much wider range of research and innovation outputs and outcomes, as well as leadership skills and other essential activities in the community. This should hopefully lead to a reduction in stress and a higher level of success from a more diverse range of applicants. The rationale behind a narrative CV is laudable and feedback has been positive. However, no comparative study between narrative and traditional CVs has been performed, which means we do not know yet whether it will indeed result in higher levels of success from a more diverse range of applicants. The lack of detailed guidance for applicants and the lack of examples for applicants makes it difficult to know what makes a successful narrative CV. Writing a narrative CV is a different approach to capturing your research outputs and activities and to prioritizing which ones to highlight in your CV. Some outputs will fit under several headings and it's easy to end up repeating yourself. However, it's not recommended to repeat yourself. The lack of detailed guidance for assessors means we are not sure how narrative CVs are assessed fairly. This adds further to the uncertainty for applicants who are preparing narrative CVs. Despite the caveats discussed, we can give you advice on how to write a good narrative CV, and it is a skill you can already start practicing. The UKRI expects an area of font size 11, 
and a maximum length of four sides of A4. Quality is more important than quantity. Tell a story and do not just provide a list, especially when it comes to publications. You can reference a paper, but instead of mentioning the impact factor of the journal, you can provide context and explain why you have included this paper in your CV, summarize the scientific content and the research impact of the paper, such as, for example, influence on policy and practice. The narrative should be about how you have done things rather than just what you have done. Choose relevant examples to demonstrate your output and impact. It's okay to show passion and ambition in a narrative CV. You should be more reflective than when you write a traditional CV. You can think about a broader impact of your work. For this video, I will use the UKRI Resume for Research and Innovation, R4RI, which is based on the Royal Society's Resume for Researchers. The format of the narrative CV is still changing and it is slightly different for each type of grant so please make sure you read the guidelines carefully. This video will cover the following sections. One, personal details, education, key qualifications and relevant positions. Two, contributions to the generation and flow of new ideas, hypotheses, tools or knowledge. Section three, the development of others and maintenance of effective working relationships. Section four, contributions to the wider research and or innovation community. Five, contributions to the broader research and or innovation users and audiences and towards wider societal benefit. Then there is a personal statement and you can add additional information. This video will now address each section in more detail and it will allow you time to write your own sections. Section one, your personal details, is meant to be the place where you introduce yourself. This is the time to make a good impression. Tell them who you are, what your current position is, what is your area of research, why is this research important, or why are you excited about this research? Then tell a story about your career to this point. Give them your education in chronological order, awards you have received, qualifications and skills, including extracurricular activities. And funding you have obtained, select some key grants. You can now pause this video and write this part of your narrative CV. Section two asks about your contributions to the generation and flow of new ideas, hypotheses, tools or knowledge. It asks you to explain how you have contributed and which key skills you have acquired and used. What kind of examples can you use here? Pause the video and make a list. Outputs that you can mention in section two are open data sets, a situation where you have used a creative approach or overcome technical difficulties, techniques, tools, code or software you have developed, presentations at conferences or conferences you organized or hosted, in this section, you can also mention publications, not just research publications, also policy publications, reviews or evidence synthesis, where you bring together information from a range of sources and disciplines. As mentioned before, please do not simply provide a list of publications and the impact factor of the journals, but instead provide context and explain why you have selected these papers and how they have contributed to the generation of new ideas, hypotheses, tools or knowledge. Other outputs could be technical innovations, patents, industrial partnerships, entrepreneurial or industrial products, community standards, development of clinical practice, educational products. Did you have any examples on your list not mentioned here? Well, perhaps they will be mentioned under one of the other sections, or if not, let us know and we can add them to this video. You can now pause the video and write section two of your narrative CV. Section three is about your contributions to research teams and the development of others. Give examples of how your expertise had a positive impact on individuals, 
teams, organization or strategy in and outside of your institute. Pause the video and write your own list of examples. You can give examples of teaching, supervision, mentoring, workshops and summer schools. Contributions to equality and diversity, research culture, Athena Sworn and other committees can also go into this section. Other good examples can be your work as a team member, including project management. Or your contributions to strategic leadership. Involvement in and establishment of research teams, such as collaborations and networks from institutional, maybe interdisciplinary, to international. You can now pause the video and use your own list and the suggestions given here to add to it and then write section three of your narrative CV. Section four covers your contributions to the wider research and innovation community. What examples can you give of activities you have engaged in to progress the research community? Pause the video to think about your examples. Write down a list. You could mention editing, reviewing, refereeing, committee work, evaluation of researchers and research projects, organization of events, conferences, webinars and summits. Do you have examples of work where you have contributed to increasing research integrity or improving the research and innovation culture like gender equality, diversity, mobility of researchers, reward and recognition of researchers' various activities. Memberships of society committees, boards or panels all contribute to the wider research community. Have you been appointed to other positions of responsibility, including corporate roles? You can now pause the video to add to your list of activities you have engaged in to progress the research community and to then write this section of your narrative CV. Section five covers how you have exploited your research. How has societal engagement and knowledge exchange had an impact on different stakeholders? Pause the video to make a list of examples from your own career. Have you had an impact on industry and healthcare providers? Maybe through a partnership, patents, translation of your research into industrial or biomedical applications or products? Or have you been the founder of a spin-out company? Have you influenced policy makers? Researchers in different fields or disciplines or international collaborations? Have you had an impact on the broader public through public engagement and outreach or involvement of patients or patient advocacy groups in processes and clinical trials? Pause the video and look again at your list of examples that demonstrate how your engagement with society and your knowledge exchange has had an impact on industry and healthcare, policymakers, researchers and the broader public. Does this slide give you additional ideas to add to your list? Pause the video and write this section of your CV. Under the personal statement, you can reflect on your overarching goals and motivation for the activities in which you've been involved. Be genuine. Put things in context. Please don't just use buzzwords. In a study that looked at a new Swiss Sci CV format, some reviewers gave the feedback that they felt there was redundancy and that there was too much use of boastful language in the narratives. You can find a link to this study under the video in the video description. The additional information section is optional. It can include relevant information that relates to your proposal, like career breaks, secondments, volunteering, part-time work, other relevant experience, including time spent in different sectors. Below this video, in the video description, is a link to a resource from the University of Glasgow. It has a few examples for different sections of the narrative CVs. You can also find a link to a Nature article from April 2022. This has researchers' thoughts on the introduction of the narrative CV. And finally, there's a link to the study that analyzed the pilot of the narrative CV by the Swiss funding agency. I hope this video has put you in a position where you're able to select relevant examples for your own narrative CV and write the different sections. Please remember that we are here to help 
and you can always book a one-to-one -one appointment to get tailored feedback on your narrative CV from one of our careers consultants. Best of luck with your applications.